quickly, I will just show you. Uh, we say that he's going to miss at least two games. Here's the Grizzlies' upcoming schedule for what this is worth. Obviously, it's a story that goes well beyond the basketball piece of it, but there is significance, of course, to his being away. He's a superstar player. They play both L.A. teams over the course of the next few days. Thursday, you see the Warriors and then back-to-back -back games with the Mavericks. As Woj told you, there is not clarity as of this point as to when we should expect to see him back on the floor. In the meantime, this is certainly something that pretty much everyone around the NBA world and beyond has thoughts on. Stephen A., we'll start with you. What are yours? <clears throat> well, I want to first say that I want to preface my comments by saying that I'm really proud of the statement that John Moran put out. It was necessary. It was apropos, no doubt about that. And I want to make sure that John Morant, his family, his friends, and everybody understands that all of us up here are fans of his. And anything that we say, myself, Will Bond, Jalen Rose, Woj, anybody, we're saying it in the best interest of his future. I covered Allen Iverson for the first 10 years of his career every day. And when I tell you that was a beat in and of itself, Woj knows what I'm talking about with that. Everybody knows what I'm talking about there. It was a different level, okay? But when you look at Ja Morant, the one thing that I find incredibly alarming, there was so much stuff that Allen Iverson took hits for that had nothing to do with him, but had everything to do with the company he kept. And because from the streets, very loyal, ain't diamond out anybody, he take a lot of hits. In this particular instance, that's Ja on film. That's Ja that you see on the TMZ video. He had no choice but to own that to be honest with you. And so I applaud him for embracing that. But when you bring into account the other incidences, let me look in the camera and say what I'm about to say to John Moran. You are a superstar. You're 23 years old. You got a deal that kicks in next year that could exceed $231 million over the next five years. And on this show, on national television, there's you associated with police. Think about that for a second. And then ask yourself, is it really, really worth it? You know the answer to that, bro. It's not worth it. You're a superstar basketball player. You represent your organization. You represent your family. You represent your city. You've got to be mindful of all of that. It's never off. And so many times we don't tell these players this. NBA has off-duty police officers. They've got connections with the FBI. They've got connections with everybody. The NBA knows what you're doing. They know who you're doing it with. They know where you are. They know how, how you're conducting yourself at all times. Don't think they're not watching. They're always watching. And when I get upset is that all of us, Jalen's from the streets of New York, uh, Detroit, I'm from the streets of New York City. You know, we know this kind of stuff. We know the kind of things that people fight just to protect the few dollars they have. What do you think an organization is going to do to protect their multi-billion dollar investment? They will, they will spare no expense. They will do whatever they can. So I want him to be mindful of that, be aware of that, understand that you're in a different stratosphere. You got to conduct yourself properly. I'm going to say it to his boys as well. I had the pleasure of meeting them in Dallas this summer. I think good dudes, hearts in the right place, they mean them no harm. But you got to step up and be protective of yourself and be protective of him by the way you conduct yourself. That laser that was pointing allegedly pointing at the Indiana Pacers. You can't have stuff like that coming on. You can't have stuff. And last but not least, his dad, to T. Morant. Nothing but love and respect for you, sir. You are his daddy, not his friend, his daddy. I'm not saying you can't be friends, but you're his father. And so when we see this kind of stuff going on, all of y'all get lumped in because it ain't just a 23-year-old John Morant that needs to protect himself. It's all of you who love him, who want to protect him, who wishes for the best for him. You have an obligation to look out for him to do it. It's really well said. Michael Wilbon is from Chicago, by the way. Michael, what are your thoughts today? They're between sad and angry, Greeny. Um, I don't, I'm not going to pretend to know Ja Morant well, but in my exposures to Ja, what's striking even two and three years ago, his first year lead, three, four years ago, is there is a real, there's real intellect there when you talk to and listen to him. When you talk to him, you have a conversation, he's not looking at his phone and glancing around the room. He's engaged. He listens. There's thought there. And so when I hear this, 
When you see these stories, and we started hearing about this in the Washington Post a while ago, and then what happened overnight, you're thinking, okay, what in the world is the plan here? Whether it's him, his boys, I don't know his associates. The people close to him, close to him with the team. What's your plan? Do you, is this your plan? You think this is going to accomplish something? You've got a team, no team ever wins with this. Don't equate this to something like, oh, the bad boy pisses. No, that was on the court, almost theater. This is real life. First of all, if you are brandishing a gun, that can get you killed. Do we need to get more serious than that? So whoever's around him, what is it? What is your plan? What are you doing? You can't turn on TV for a half an hour without seeing Shaquille O'Neal and Charles Barkley and Steph Curry and LeBron James, the faces of the league over a 40-year period among them, not to even mention Michael Jordan. Do you know what's at stake? Do you know the tens, hundreds of millions of dollars that are available to you and the opportunities available to you if you are the face of the league in good standing? Do you not see that? Do the people around you not see that? And so I'm angry, Greeny, because I also think about this, this, this embrace of thug life and how it disproportionately affects our communities, yes. whether it's Queens, Detroit, South Side of Chicago, it disproportionately affects black communities. And that and maybe maybe Adam Silver's gonna have to talk to some other people in and around his office. This is serious. This can't be a light touch because you're a player's commissioner. I thought about Jalen Rose and it almost brought me to tears earlier today. Because our dear friend, one of the many reasons I love Jalen, would have nothing to do with basketball, is that Jalen Rose has dedicated his personal life to secondary education in formal and informal ways, dedicated his personal wealth and resources. We, people don't know this about Jalen. We know it. Jalen has dedicated himself in Detroit and his academy to eradicating this kind of garbage. It's garbage, Greeny, the embrace of this. I don't want to hear it. Stephen A. eloquently talked about the whole beat of covering Allen Iverson. Hell, I was there for that beat when he was at Georgetown. Mm, and then yeah. not necessarily many John Chaney's and John Thompson's left to mm -hmm. shout from the mountaintops, stop this garbage. I mean, Jalen does this every day of his life, has meetings and has issues and deals with teachers and principals and students and faculty and all these things. I don't even know how he does it. But this angers me. And the Memphis Grizzlies and the league starting above them, they better get a hold of this yesterday. This cannot go on. And the league is talking about it. Players are like, what are the Grizzlies doing? What are they doing?